Okay, thank you. Um, uh, first of all, I would just like to mention um, that is, this is a collaborative work um, done by my colleagues, uh, Leonard Conle, Eric Katzen, Fotos Janidis, and Andreas Witt, who are also all here today. And um, yeah, we were interested in uh, tracing the shift to objectivity in German encyclopedias of the long 19th century. Um, our motivation um, was the following. Um, it stems from the fact that um, encyclopedias are an essential source of knowledge dissemination. And um, as such, um, as knowledge um, that may shape a people's uh, view on any topic, um, objectivity should be an important goal of the encyclopedia. Um, but it may not always have been that way. Um, so our main question is, how objective are encyclopedias of the long 19th century? And um, in trying to answer that, um, we want to add to the knowledge about encyclopedias as a text type. I would first like to go into some more details um, of what we mean by objectivity. Um, so what we know is that there are multiple dimensions to objectivity that interplay. Um, Shen uh, defines uh, non-objectivity as the property of creating a bias according to personal beliefs, judgment, judgments, and emotion. But there's also other factors um, that constitute um, non-objectivity, which are uncertainty, ambiguity, and imprecision. And all these dimensions are highly uh, context-dependent. So not every statement that contains uncertainty um, may also or could also be um, non-objective. And uh, what we see in practice is that objectivity and subjectivity detection, or the, the task of doing so, um, is often conflated with uh, sentiment analysis. Yes, and um, we, um, in, in this work, we analyze two dimensions of non-objectivity in particular, which are emotion and personal interpretation. Um, yeah. So for the remainder of my talk, um, I first would like to go into um, the corpus we used, the encyclopedia corpus, then um, our two experiments, which are um, querying surface level features, and then um, emotion detection, and finally, our conclusions and future work. So our corpus consists of six encyclopedias um, of the genre conversational uh, lexicon, which means that they all um, cover a wide variety of topics. Um, but there are still some nuances uh, in the corpus. For example, um, we have one encyclopedia that is specifically um, um, illustrated, one that's a pocketbook edition, and uh, one most peculiar outlier, which is the Damen Konversationslexikon, which is an encyclopedia targeted towards women. And um, apart from that, uh, they also all differ um, in the overall size, so meaning just in, uh, in word tokens and in the number of entries, but also in depth of the entries discussed, so uh, mean entry length and tokens. And uh, we also previously aligned um, the entries to Wikidata, and um, from that we also know that there's some uh, differences in content proportions um, in terms of these broad um, entry categories. So people, places, abstract uh, entities and objects. So all of these are uh, confounding variables um, that I would like you to keep in mind for um, the analysis to follow. From another perspective, um, this is what the corpus looks like on a timeline. Um, and as you can see, um, we are dealing with a considerable gap um, in the second half of the 19th century. And our corpus only picks up 
um, after 1900. So this is just another limitation to keep in mind um, when showing you um, yeah, all results. Um, so for our first experiments uh, or set of experiments, um, we look for surface level features um, that indicate um, a kind of personality. Um, from the discourse of science, we know that in the 17th and 18th centuries, many researchers used first person singular pronouns to narrate their scientific object observations and experiments. And um, this could also be applied to, for example, the scientific statements in the encyclopedias. We also know that by around 1900, a consensus had emerged making encyclopedias off limits to personal disclosures, explicit opinions, passionate language, and playfulness. So we tried to formalize um, this notion uh, in three ways. So this notion of objectivity. Um, first, um, from, um, yeah, from, the, from the first citation I gave, we tried to uh, see what the share of first person narration in our encyclopedias actually is. So we queried ich or German, uh, English I. Um, we used, um, we did a rule-based um, search query and tried to exclude any false positives that we could find, which was mostly direct speech. And we manually inspected the results. Um, and um, on the right, you can see the occurrences um, of I relative to the amount of entries per encyclopedia. And what we can see is that we have generally a steady decline of uh, first person narration. Just some examples to know um, what this looks like um, from uh, Brockhaus. Um, this is just the English translation. Should I say for the good or for the bad of Europe? Or um, from the Women's Encyclopedia. But if, as I say, there is an inner sense of beauty in man. So the second feature we were interested in were exclamations, um, which may suggest emotion and some kind of um, expressiveness. Um, what we can see here, so again, um, we try to exclude any false positives and we did a manual inspection of the results. And we have a clear outlier, which is um, again, the women's encyclopedia, um, which could be um, an, yeah, an indication of the uh, intended liveliness that was intentionally woven into by the editor. Apart from that, we also again see a steady decline of this feature. And some examples again, uh, how often man puts far more trust in man than God, or um, he was asked to write oratios, he wrote them and with what success. Finally, we queued, uh, queried um, interjections, which um, uh, which sole function um, is just to uh, convey an emotion. And uh, we used Spacey to tag our entries and counted all word tokens that were tagged with ITJ. Mm -hmm. um, we found mostly abbreviations to be false positives, which we again manually excluded. The overall occurrences of these are quite low, um, but apart from that, we again see a decline. And interjections we found mostly were um, uh, words like indeed or alas. So for our second experiment, we tried to detect emotion in the uh, encyclopedia entries. So again, from the statement that um, we may find ex or find a decline of explicit emotions, passionate language, and playfulness, we um, formalized this as emotion detection. We used a bird model 
uh, trained to detect emotions in German poetry from 1859 to 1911, which we already had available, and used that to detect the emotions in encyclopedias. Um, the task very formally is sentence classification, and we manually inspected the results because, again, we have no annotations, no training data, and also no test data. So for the binary detection, um, so just to see whether any emotion is present in a sentence or not, we can find uh, a steady decline from about 20% of sentences that contain an emotion um, from Brockhaus 1809 to about 5% um, for the Brockhaus 1911. We can also look into the distribution um, of the different emotions that we tagged, which are um, in order love, joy, sadness, anger, fear, and agitation. And um, interestingly, most encyclopedias contain anger, um, except for two encyclopedias, uh, which is Myers, um, which also shows a large proportion of joy alongside uh, anger. And also, again, the women's encyclopedia, um, which we found to contain love, joy, and sadness above anger. Um, I now want to show you just some examples um, from uh, these sentences that were classified that way. So the first entry is cholera, where we detected uh, sadness. So this is from the women's encyclopedia. Um, the first uh, paragraph or the first sentence is the German original, which you may read if you know German. And um, the second one is the English translation. Um, the highlighted words uh, are just by me. Um, again, the whole sentence was classified, um, but um, I just wanted to highlight it, the words just for um, personal speculation. So for cholera, we find a description of the illness. Um, short period of indisposition, digestive disorders. So generally, these are uh, word or uh, word groups that may be associated with sadness, but it's no uh, actual emotional depiction. So we would consider this a false positive. On the other hand, um, we have cholera in Brockhaus 1837 which is described very differently. So if the sickness shows a malignant character, the person becomes a living corpse, and the face betrays the deepest suffering. So this is actually very figurative language that conveys uh, emotion. So this example would be a true positive. Um, and then just another example from what we actually found with anger. Um, this is from Brockhaus 1911, which is um, from the entry Maria Stewart. And um, we find a description of her beheading. So she was condemned as a high traitor and she was actually beheaded. So um, this is again an, a very objective description. Um, but again, it was classified as anger um, through associated word groups. Um, I mean, the person who beheaded Maria Stewart was probably very angry, I guess. Um, but yeah, again, a false positive. Um, on the other hand, we find uh, in Brockhaus 1837 um, a statement about her husband who uh, Mr. Darnley, who was a contemptible man devoted to gluttony. A very judgmental statement. Um, we, so um, in this case, we would consider that a true positive. And finally, for our last example, again, Maria Stewart, this time from Bockhaus 1809. Um, we actually find a sentence that reports the emotions of uh, Jacob VI. So he was so upset 
by it that he uttered the most violent threats against the Queen of England. So in this case, we actually have the description of a third person's emotions that still may, may be um, reported on objectively and are in this case actually not a sign of subjectivity. So finally, um, for our conclusion, for our analysis of surface level features and emotions, um, we can find a hint um, of a shift towards objectivity and cyclopedias. Um, most importantly, probably, um, we found some more future work for sentiment and emotion analysis. So we need a clear distinction between a narrator's and a third person's emotions. And um, in our case, actually also, um, the objective state of an entity. So for example, for the sickness that is objectively said. Um, we also need some more statistical validation for these results. And um, we may add some more experiments. For example, um, the analysis of used tenses, um, the use of figures and um, figurative speech could be um, such experiments. We also, um, to close the gap in our um, corpus, we would like to add more corpora um, for the second half of the 19th century to complete the picture. And finally, what could be interesting to explore would be the constellation of science, um, encyclopedia as a sort of middle ground, and public discourse with additional sources. So for example, scientific texts and newspaper articles. Yeah, and with that, um, thank you so much for the attention um, and I'm looking forward to your questions. <laughs>